one up. Come on. Here you go. Hey guys, Pete and I thought we would take a minute to answer some of your questions in a little bit more of a conversational way. So today I'm gonna answer the question that I get by far the most often, which is what qualifies something to be vintage space? Where do I draw the line of what's vintage and what's not? So to answer this question, I have to give you guys a little bit of the backstory of, to the name of the blog and the YouTube channel. Uh, vintage Space, ask anybody who has a blog or has a YouTube channel or anything like that, the name is really important because if it works, that name is what's gonna stick with you for ages. Um, so I was in a coffee shop in Tempe, Arizona, where I was living at the time about five and a half years ago, um, and a couple friends of mine and I came up with Vintage Space, um, trying to think of something that was both spacey because of the whole, you know, bit, um, but also vintage because the space that I talk about is mid-century, it's it's vintage, um, but also I'm a bit of a mid-century Americana enthusiast, so it seems kind of like a good way to kind of merge the two things that, that I really kind of love. Um, and that cross paths in sort of the, the, the area that I like to focus in. So that's kind of where vintage came from in the vintage and vintage space came from. So it's not like I, I sat down and said, well, I will only discuss things up to 1970 because after 1970 to 1985, it is retro. And then, you know, later it's, I don't know what. Um, so the vintage and vintage space for me is anything that has a connection to that 1960s era of space flight. So a lot of you guys have seen this in everything that I do, that there's a lot of tie-ins to things that sort of, um, you know, projects that, that started in the 60s that NASA is still using the research from or ideas that were germinating in the 60s that have only been recently brought up again for discussion. Um, an example of that would be the inflatable habitat modules that are now being considered for the International Space Station or potential Mars colonies. So when people started getting really excited about that a few years ago, um, I took that and I kind of looked back at, I think it was a 1962 proposal out of Langley for an inflatable space station, um, which, uh, you know, as we know, never got off the ground. But it's really interesting to me to see that that this idea that is sort of now being kind of discussed as like a really interesting future prospect was actually being discussed you know more than 50 years ago um, another one that I, I one of my favorite stories is that the uh, the parachute that landed MSL on Mars um, used research from a 1967 um, upper atmospheric supersonic parachute deployment test the PEP program that I've talked about before so you have this modern rover that's being landed with in part 1960s data um, and the aero shell for for msl was the same as the viking in terms of its its shape so it's you have all this kind of heritage technology that's really interesting so for me that's what makes vintage space vintage is when you have that connection and this question comes up a lot because people always ask me when at what point will the shuttle program be old enough to qualify for vintage space it's not something that i talk about too much um the, sh the shuttle definitely has that, that characteristic of connections to the 1960s um, and 1950s because you can link it to dinosaur um, to have a vintage space connection for me. And I really just haven't gotten into it yet because I just haven't gotten into it yet. Um, the, trans, the, the sort of shift from, uh, from Apollo to shuttle is a very interesting one and very much in the vintage space banner as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's something that I'll eventually get to. I can't say when, but it's there, it'll be there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what makes things vintage for vintage space and I hope that answers that question because again, I get this one a lot from you guys and it is a good question. So all that being said, do you guys have other questions that are sort of a little bit more freeform? Because I get a lot of questions, a lot of great questions from you guys that aren't just about um, wanting to know about missions, about programs, about certain technologies. Um, if you have other questions that you want me to kind of take on um, and rant a little bit about in kind of this more free form, sitting on my couch, uh, Pete left. I think he doesn't like the giant bright light, but I'll try to lure Pete back with more treats. Um, leave those questions in the comment section below because I would love to get a different kind of conversation going on this channel. So as always, be sure to follow me on Twitter at AST Vintage Space. And just a heads up that I will be doing an Apollo 14 live tweet plus 45 years beginning on January 31st to celebrate the 45th anniversary of the mission. The first flight after Apollo 13. What will have changed? Will they make it? And with a new video going up every week, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.